used and marketed nationwide. You can see the samples of the chewing gum of the late 19th century and uh, the supermarkets came up. The processed food and fast food corporations also uh, grown a lot. So it becomes more and more convenient for people to come and get all the food in one place instead of going different shops, different uh, grocery store, meat store, uh, dairy store. It was easier to go in one place. And the city dwellers of that time, they didn't have gardens or farms nearby. They lived in the buildings like we do now in apartments. And fewer had extended family in the community that can cook for them. And adult women also, they're more likely to have a job or career than to be dedicated to homemaking and food preparation. So millions of people that didn't have time and the skills to cook. So they had to go somewhere where, where they can take the food ready. And uh, high-end restaurants were not always, of course, available for such people. Depends on the job that you have. So that was the start uh, of the fast food idea. The fast food, the street food itself, uh, like donors, kebabs and um, um, falafels, it has a very long history. But the idea of the fast food, the places where you can get your food really fast and eat like McDonald's or prepped food like uh, Spam, you know, the, the ham, canned ham or the yogurts that already packaged for you maybe even with uh, some uh, flavorings so you can just open it it started at that time so it is uh, it has become another revolution in eating more and more people they were following these diets and um, in the end um, there were another side another wave that start to fight the fast food uh, idea it, it, they called it slow food it was founded in 1989 by Carlo Petrini in Italy it is started he, he says he started when he saw that the open McDonald's uh, on the entrance to Coliseum in Rome and he was uh, like um, not the pistol he was very upset because of that because you know Italian food it's very good um, better than McDonald's in my taste so it was the second health food movement and it created a new interest of, uh, in cooking uh, organic foods and it promoted organic food in farmers markets. It um, promoted for people to look for um, um, local food, traditional cooking. They say you don't have to rush, you have to find a place that will be cheap enough to feed the masses who doesn't have so much money, but still do it traditional way and uh, feed, feed them with a nice proper food. So Slow Food Organization has expanded since then to include over 100,000 members with branches in over 150 countries. Of course, there are other movements. Uh, there are foodies also nowadays. Uh, basically now society wants the millennials, let's say, want to have healthier food than it used to be in, um, in the middle of uh, 20th century. Okay, so this is a quick, very quick, very short, very fast story of industrialization of the food. Please, if you have any questions, ask me. Most of the information I got was from this book, uh, Food, Cultural, Culinary History, The Teaching Company. I can recommend it a lot if you'd like to read more about food history. And also, the, of course, the modernist cuisine, the art uh, and science of cooking. Okay, so if you have any questions, please ask, otherwise we will continue with uh, our demo. Okay, if you will have questions, you can also type them in the chat and we will uh, check them later. Yeah, I want to find a way to hold it. So today we I, are going to okay, show I can you hold a couple it. I will recipes. hold it. That's okay. Let me just reposition myself. Um, I can stop presenting, I believe. So you can just see my screen, uh, just see me. Okay, we have two recipes for you today. I hope you saw them on the resource. One is a classic way uh, to cook the fish, one of the classic ways to cook the fish. We, we uh, stick to Bulgarian recipes as we're in Bulgaria and we like the food here a lot. So one is the smoked fish with the potato salad. I think potato salads you can find in any country. 
and this is the specific Bulgarian potato salad. The fish I'm going to smoke on the, the walnut shells because walnuts are one of the common nuts that you can find here and of course you always have this as a waste if you have a tree and you pick it and uh, you don't have you know, many people don't know what to do with this and they just throw it in the garbage but this has a lot of aroma so what you can do you can smoke with it and pass the smoke to your food and as you remember the smoking was one of the things of that time so the fish that we're going to cook is here it's called uh, you can see it from here. It's called uh, balagut or bonito. Uh, bonito fish or tuna. Basically, it's from the tuna family. It's called And I would like to um, fillet. Before. And maybe just before that, we will we start the peppers now? Or yes! Yes, guys, before we start, there's two of us today. Good morning. Before we start, I will show you the shish kopek, what I'm going to do yesterday. I don't say it properly. Uh, people make fun of me when I say it. But uh, it's, uh, this is really, really warm. Give my back, I'm sorry. But the whole concept is... I burned myself. The concept is... To put the peppers here. Look at those peppers, huh? Inside, all right. And then I'm gonna put the lid back on afterwards. All right. And then what you do is, this is gonna help to roast them. It's gonna fall onto the food. But this is gonna sear the skin from the outside. Um, you can have bigger uh, shish kopek or the whole pepper by itself. It's really, really fast, because otherwise, if you're not careful, you're going to burn the meat of the pepper. You don't want to have this. And you this want is, to char the outside. This is part of the second recipe, which is? Yeah, that's the shepherd's salad. It starts from the shopska, which is a classic butter and salad, and then it's upgraded with proteins and eggs and more vegetables in it. This tool was invented uh, in Bulgaria here in the late 1900s. And it was voted in the turn of the century by Bulgarians, I believe it was in 1987 or um, 2007. I'm sure the seven, I have to double check the, the facts of it. But uh, many countries do the same thing where they char a vegetable. Mexico, for example, we used to have a comal, which is a metal plate that goes on the burner. When people have gas over this, you put your plate on it and you want your tortillas on it. Uh, but you would this you would use this to char. You can also put it in the oven if you want. Some people have deep fried the peppers, and once they're cooked, you put it in a container with clean film or in a plastic bag. So the steam generated will go and peel the skin. Help you peel the skin of the pepper. It is really really fast. You can actually hear the the noise. The psh behind that's what it does over here. That's what's happening with this. Okay. And let me get you one so you can see what I'm talking about. See how fast it is. It goes like this. You see that black spot? That's how fast it goes with this. So we can uh, roast peppers different ways, but the idea here is to cook just the outside yeah. to keep the pepper still juicy. Because if you, you can make this in the oven, but in the oven it will cook the whole pepper through and uh, sometimes you want to keep it more juicy, more fresh. And you can do eggplants, you can do carrots, you can do many vegetables. Back to the fish. Okay, so I would like to fillet the fish here before we're gonna start smoking. And uh, I will start with, uh, first of all, need to gut the fish. So I go here just with the tip of the knife, carefully cutting the belly just to see what's inside. Now have a small bowl to get rid of the intestines. Sorry if it's gonna get messy, but you know it's part of the chef's job also. Don't always get the fish gutted. And sometimes you just fish it by yourself. Here in the Black Sea you can have plenty of fish. That's really good for you. 
and seasonal also. So in different parts of the uh, year you can get different fishes, like everywhere else. So I'm going to remove the gills, because gills make your fish bitter. And also sometimes they just stuck to the guts. Another fish that will be uh, good for this method and for this recipe would be the uh, mackerel. Okay, I'll just need to rinse it and everything also, everything else also. This fish is like from the nightmare movie, from the horror movie. Making your watches. I'm lucky today because this fish doesn't have scales, so I don't have to scale it. And anyway, so we have it, it's now clean, rinsed. And I'm going here under the fin, and I want to cut as close to the head as possible. Just to here. And the same can do straight away on the other side. Okay. There are some scales on the top, but uh, not here, not on the body. And then here we have a spine, so we go with the tip of the knife to go here under the skin. And what I want to do is just to pierce the skin first. And you have here the, the um, fins on the top. You want to go on top of them. Carefully. And while I'm here in the end with the tail, I'll just push it through, making sure the knife stays on the bone and cut it this way. Now I have it slightly open, yeah? I can help myself with the fingers and just again with the tip of the knife I have to find the bones that are on the carcass and I can go like this with a knife just scraping on those bones maybe you can hear the sound this way I will be sure I'm separating as much meat as possible And then another way would be, because here there is the belly, there is not so much meat. So what's important is to separate on this part here. So you can put your knife flat on the bones. You can hold your, uh, the tail of the fish and fillet at the same time with one hand. And you can just go like this with a knife, straight cut. Don't worry if you cut some bones also, you can pull them out later on. So they have to fill it like this. The meat is extremely soft on this. The meat is very soft, yeah. So you have to be really careful. And then you can or you can cut the head off so it doesn't stay on your way. Or you can keep it on, it's up to you. Some people it's uh, you know prefer different. I, I will remove it now so just mm. not on the way. The smell of the peppers is amazing already. Over there. And here, 
can do basically the same process on the other side. Again, I'm going just, I want to separate this, uh, the spine from the meat. Make sure you use the right knife for this, it's the filleting knife, it's very flexible and it should be sharp enough. So, here just separating from the tail. And again, if you have your meat already separated here, you can just hold the tail and uh, help with the other hand and release the filet from the bones. I have just a little bit of uh, meat, fish, fish meat, stick to the bones, but uh, this fish is really, really tender. So some waste is, it has to happen. So now all we need to do is just to clean it. For this fish, there is also the bones here in the middle. So I will need to cut them off. You can also cut in two fillets like this, or you can try to just go like this in the middle and try to extract it. The flesh is so soft that I don't want to pull it. You see, I just extracted it like this. Now you don't have bones in the middle and you can actually put your seasonings in there if you want to. And also on the bottom, there might be still some like fins and bones. So we'll clean that part also. So you have more neat filet. Make sure here in the end, you don't have uh, big bones. And another thing here is the belly. Yeah, this is basically fat and the skin and it the might ribs. have the ribs here they actually here on the top so you have to go it's so soft you have to go like this between the bones and the meat basically peel on this fish basically so uh, peel this fish uh, like that so it's blown up guys in the chat for the session this morning i put the live feed the live link of the Collier Institute. If you want to click on this, also you're going to see the Instagram. Uh, what Chef Collian is uh, showing. showing. He's holding the camera right now to do this. Okay. Um, May I ask for the oval plate? Yes. Just put it on the side. Okay. So I'll just quickly do the same thing for the other filet. It's a student, Collian. It's a student, the Chef. I don't know anymore. So cleaning this fillet here, on this side where we hit the fins also, check, just check with your hands if there is any bones or not. For the respect. Or there on the top you might have few scales. And again here in the middle I'm just gonna cut out this part. Carefully again, you need to have a sharp knife to do this, otherwise you'll just massacre your fish, especially if it's so soft. Okay, nice and beautiful. Here, here, I can feel one more bone. That's it, out. Here, just to have it a bit more clean. Okay, thank you very much for the plate. So, I'm just transferring it onto the plate where I can season it. Let me clean up the mess quickly. Now deal with it later. So I'm gonna remove um, one glove to season. So here's the fish. We have here um, the salt. The recipe you can find there. Here you have the salt and. Uh, uh, here's the white pepper. 
I'm personally not a great fan of white pepper. I mean, the flavor for me, it's not the, I like the black more, but uh, let's just pick the recipe. And I have here some white pepper prep. Can do whatever pepper you want. Okay. Mm -hmm. This one actually smells fine. That's because Chef Hugh roasted this one. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a homemade <laughs> white pepper, that's why. Lady. So, so, this is now seasoned. And here is the... Um, our walnut shells, yeah? The walnut shells, nothing else, no wood chips, nor anything, just put this. From what I learned, if you uh, want to smoke things better, you can just put a little bit of water on some of the shells. Because then they get soggy and then they produce more smoke. More smoke. I do this with but half only. Just I'm gonna have half and half. Yeah. Some, so, some soak slightly and then some dry and you make it Yeah, 50-50 because there, if everything is wet, then uh, it's not ju just not gonna burn. Then we have just a normal sieve that if you have an old metal. sieve, you can uh, dedicate metal for sure. You can dedicate it for smoking. Yeah, don't use plastic, please. Uh, I mean, it's obvious, but for sometimes it's uh, for some sometimes people just forget about small things. And we did this details. because we had an old sieve that was with some holes in it. Instead of wasting it, try to re up or upcycle. Yep. So I need to brush it with oil because otherwise, so we don't want the fish to stick. Just simple, you know, vegetable oil, cooking oil that you use for cooking in your country. Sunflower seed oil is one of the best oil in the world for this. Yes, sunflower seed, I know in, uh, yeah. I mean, I think the whole Europe is using yeah. uh, sunflower seed for cooking. In America continent, they use canola, which canola is oil, Canadian yeah. low acid uh, or low something oil. Yeah. Okay, this goes in, so your has to fit in the pot, obviously. And I, this hand I can still use, I'll transfer my fish, skin side down, into the pot. Then, uh, wait, 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 wait. You have already, ah. Uh, and then you have to cover it with the... Uh, with, the lid. with the lid or with the foil. So I don't need this glove anymore. Remember, foil has two sides. One is shiny, it reflects the heat back. And one is uh, more made. It kind of passes more heat through. We want to keep the heat inside because we want to cook the fish. To check the recipe, the fish has to become uh, one, uh, 45 to 50 degrees to be cooked, but not get too dry. So this we can check later on by the air, by thermometer. And then I have to start it on, uh, like, to start smoking. To start smoking on, a, like, not very high heat yet. So we have here... Small hmm? hole, I forget to put on the recipe. Uh, so what is good for you if you want to make sure that you know it's smoking, how you would know, you'll need to create just a little hole on the top to see if the smoke comes out or not. It draws the air also. Yeah. What you can do if you want to speed up the process, if you have a blowtorch, you could uh, just start torching the shells. But we want to show you the very basic way that you can do at home or you know in a restaurant without uh, investing so much into the technology. The okay. artisan way. The artisan way. <laughs> I mean, more artisan would be only just to go outside in the forest and uh, make a pit with some nuts that we gather, but unfortunately now is not the season. Can the the also? Also? Okay, so while this is happening, so medium heat, I don't want to burn this too fast. I want to start to start smoke it slowly. And in the meantime, uh, I can prep the salad. Or you would like to do something? Uh, no, go ahead. We okay. finish your dish. We have blah, we're good on time. So I'll finish this dish and we will then move forward to the other one. Yeah. Guys, we'll finish this dish. Take a five or six minute break. 
break, sorry, and then go with the salad after this. One second, I just need to sanitize here where we're cutting the fish. And for the salad itself, because we'll have this as the main protein in the dish. Well, I can hear it starts to shh. Maybe I'll need to st uh, soon start the extraction. If it's gonna smoke too much. Well, come on. Medium heat, Stas, somebody has a question for Teresa. It's medium heat. Yes, you don't yeah. want to have too high of a heat. It's gonna have some big fire. You know? Otherwise it's gonna burn and you have a bitter flavor. So you want to have you start with a medium to high heat and then you lower it so it smokes barely. That's the best way to do this. Okay, so this will be the main protein for the dish and for a little garnish we'll do the okay. potato salad. I have all the ingredients here prepped for me. Basically I have this new baby potatoes. It's now the season and they're really, really tasty. You can find them in the market. They are great uh, for that. We have some dill and some sliced green onion. I use the green part, but can use also use the white part. You know, from culture to culture, people prefer the white part, green onion, the green part, or both. Um, I have the seasonings. I have the, the oil, which is the sunflower oil. Uh, sunflower oil is one of the... First press. Yeah, it's a first press. It's aromatic, very nice. And sunflower oil is one of the biggest uh, productions here in Bulgaria. If you travel through the country, you'll see a lot of sunflower fields and they look amazing. Well, if you were to come to Varna, if you were supposed to come to Varna, we would have gone to Dobrich. And on the way there, you have huge, huge fields of sunflowers and of lavender also. Mm -hmm. And we'll use some apple vinegar. It's quite a common uh, ingredient to use in the apple salad, uh, in the potato salad, sorry. So for the salad itself, I'm just gonna cut this baby potatoes. I already boiled them to oh, save the time. I'll take Sorry, it. Sorry I thought you were boiling them. That's why. I'm just... I mean, it's won't make much <laughs> much of a show. Okay, I will mix the salad in this small uh, bowl. And okay, I have my. clean chef's knife. So traditionally you can just cut them in halves. If they're small, if they're big, cut them in smaller pieces. You can also, if you want, just like smash them like this. The idea is they have to absorb the flavors of the uh, vinegar and the oil. So they have to be cut some way. Okay, so. It can be also with, you know, old potatoes. Just peel, boil, and then cut. Yeah, if you have old potatoes, you'll need to peel them, of course. This baby potatoes, I prefer not to peel because you know how potatoes, they grow, they grow from the inside to the outside. So all the nutrients, they are on the outside and in the skin. So if the skin is edible and you don't have anything personal against it, I would recommend to keep it because it's uh, very, very nutritious, much more nutritious than the inside of the potato. And baby potatoes, they're really, really full of nutrients, they're really healthy for you. This big one, maybe I'll cut in four pieces, just to have even sizes. So, I seasoned the water so potato is salty. Let me see, maybe I'll need to push a bit more for this. And just have a quick look in. Yeah, I don't know if you can see the, the smoke starts to come out. Uh, can you see? I'll pump up the temperature a bit more. Okay, so I will close it back. Uh -huh, now we can see maybe, I don't know, it's hard to see I guess, but yeah, it starts, starts to go. I'll keep it high for now just to make sure it's working properly. Now, adding green herbs in here. Okay. 
Potatoes were boiled in a salty water, but I still want to add some seasoning here. Actually, I'm gonna mix it like a French dressing before in a small bowl to make sure the salt has melted. And you don't have these grains. So I would put like a few pinches here of the salt. Um, we can go like a classic French dressing, three parts of oil, one part of vinegar, I believe. If you check the recipe, it's uh, one to one. So I guess it's up to your taste. If you want a bit more acidic, you add more vinegar. If you want uh, less acidic, you put more oil. The Bulgarian way, they like it more acidic. Yep. Right. Bulgarian way, people like it a bit more acidic, so they make it one to one. And okay, let's make it uh, authentic. But first, you know, the salt doesn't melt in oil so well. So we'll have to mix it in the vinegar first. I'll put like two tablespoons of uh, vinegar. Mix it in. So the salt melts. So now it's really smoking. Nice. Uh, you see now it's smoking really, really well. Maybe I'll just reduce the temperature down. So in the beginning you can go high with the temperature to make sure that the walnuts start to, the walnut shells start to burn properly. And then you can reduce it so it doesn't, you know, set on fire. This is another reason I would like to put some moisture also, just to make it a bit more safe uh, in this way. So it's not gonna burn to fire. Okay, I put two tablespoons of this amazing aromatic oil. Next to create an unstable emulsion. If you want, you can stabilize this emulsion with xanthan, like our French colleague, uh, Spanish colleagues, I'm sorry, showed us uh, before. But because the salad is going to be eaten very fast, you see how thick it became. Uh, very fast. I don't see a big reason for it. We have a spatula here. Yeah, I'm gonna dress this, dress the potato salad. Ideally, you know, potato salads, they are kept for a while in the fridge, for a couple hours, just for potatoes to be able to absorb all the nice flavors. But I don't have this time now. We'll yeah, just make it a quick marination. The Bulgarian style is actually just to mix and eat. Uh, okay, so mm -hmm. my colleague um, um, tells me that Bulgarian way is actually quick marination like this is fine so you have the fresh flavor of the potatoes on the inside and the, like slightly pickled on the outside okay so nice and easy salad Just have to wait for fish a bit more maybe it's, maybe it's even ready hmm? maybe it's even ready can check so, let me just get away from this Cutting the board and everything. And I have here also chili oil that you have the recipe in, but I'm not going to make it today because it will take too much time. You can make any flavorful oil. This is another you know, artisan thing you can do. You can flavor the oils uh, <coughs> and vinegars by adding herbs and spices to it. Let me uh, quickly check what's going on inside. Use that tongs. Oh, maybe one second. I'll start the ventilation first. Otherwise, we'll get. Uh... Otherwise, we had some alarm breaks uh, before. You can see how well it is smoking. And I think the fish is already ready. So you see it took like 10 minutes only. And check, the meat is already getting uh, tougher. So I mm. stopped the temperature now. It smells amazing. Let me get you mm. a better viewpoint here. This is the fish. 
the only thing is your uh, pot will smell smoky for a while so uh, it is better to have one specific pot for this job and use it all, all the time for that and the sieve also um, otherwise uh, you'll have to wash it really really well okay Very nice, very clean fish. I have my plate here. <coughs> there is smoke, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Be oh. careful when you do this. Make sure you have your windows open. You have your uh, ventilation also working. Otherwise, you might get sick. Are you taking it on? Should I help you with the I think directly plate? on the plate. Or? Otherwise, work however you want. So, it's not going to be a super fancy presentation, but the point here is authentic. how to be authentic, yeah. Mm, smells like nice walnuts. So I have the fish here, it's going to be in the middle of the plate. Accompanied by, accompan, accompanied by the freshly made potato salad. I'm not gonna even put all the potatoes, I guess. I think this should be enough for one portion. I have the chili oil. Again, the recipe is there, it's quite simple, it just takes time. And uh, here in Bulgaria, I have to tell you the chili is one of the common ingredients you can find uh, everywhere. And on the markets, they sell different types of chili like the sweet, the medium and the hot it's called uh, Luta Chushka and uh, one of the ways to eat it is to saute this so it's half halfway cooked and you can after that pickle it or marinate it and keep it uh, for the whole winter and then take out and eat and sometimes the, the, in the dish you have uh, like a Russian roulette because 9 peppers of, out of 10 are not so spicy <laughs> and one is extremely spicy and you serve this to 10 guests and you see who is the luckiest <laughs> so Chile, even though it came originally from uh, South America it found its way and people love it all over the world and here it's uh, one of the great sources of chili also so we're gonna go with the chili oil as much as you want and I have here some tissues just to make a nice decoration also, uh, we'll give some sweet flavor to the potatoes and to the fish. I can use my big chef's knife just to cut it carefully. We love microherbs here and also here in Varna can find, in Varna and in Sofia in the capital can find some uh, farms that, not the farms, but got to say the gardens that grow this micro herbs and they offer you a big variety and this is one nice way to make your dish even more healthier and look, looking more pretty you can also go to the forest like remember on the first day we dis uh, discussed the gastrobotanica uh, gastrobotanica way of uh, making artisan food where people go to the forest and they pick wild herbs and flowers so this can be applied also okay very simple dish smoked fish with the walnut shells I have a leftover with the baby potatoes with some dill and green onions one of the staple herbs here in Bulgaria with the sunflower oil with the apple vinegar absolutely traditional and chili oil absolutely traditional way of uh, cooking and very delicious one more thing before I return, we'll probably have a break and then we'll move on to the shepherd salad. Is I just want to show you, we have also the, uh, the smoking gun for the cold smoking. Let me just take out the fish, other fish before it gets overcooked. Okay, so 
to the other plate. Okay, so it's the smoking gun. As you can see here. And usually you can buy uh, specific wood chips because different wood will have different flavors. So what we have here, we have uh, hickory, we have uh, mesquite. The brand doesn't matter, you can buy any. And actually, you know, this, in the fancy jars, they sell it for quite expensive price. And basically it's just the wood chips that you should be able to find in your country just from uh, some smaller shops, let's say. So what you do to use it, here you have a small space with the mesh, metal mesh. And usually in the package you have extra meshes that you can change because they will burn fast. You put your sawdust inside here. On the other side here you, you put the batteries. Usually it's like four, four batteries. So, and here usually have a switch between slow speed and the fast speed. Here you have, this is detachable and you can wash it and uh, use it again. So you have your food in a bowl. You cover this bowl with the plastic so the smoke doesn't escape. You leave a small spot where you can put in the uh, hose. The hose, yeah, exactly. And you use, you can use the flame torch or because the lighter is not very convenient, the blow torch is the best. You will start your uh, wood chips and you switch on the fan. If you want more smoke, you go with the fast speed. If you want uh, um, less smoke, you go with the slow speed. And also this will depend on how fast uh, the wood chips will burn. And you smoke the food inside of the bowl. When it's enough smoke, you remove this and you cover the, the hole so it can just stay there and smoke for 20 minutes. You can shake it time to time. And then your food is smoked. But just again to remind you, this will not cook the food, this will just give it the flavor. Yeah, this is the difference between cold these two methods. This is the hot smoking method, this is the cold smoking method. This is the most artisan, more, most easy and uh, approachable way for any person. This is a little bit more uh, of investment, you have to buy this machine, though they are not very expensive. Uh, and this is the cold smoking. Okay, so please ask any questions if you would like I can use this machine to smoke just to show you how it smokes but basically I hope it's understandable what to do with it should not be uh, confusion Chief here yes sir. can I stop this now or? so uh, uh, yes we can stop it actually okay Teresa you were asking around 10 minutes of medium heat you see the main point is you need to start the, the wood shells to smoke and after that you can go down and this will be approximately 10 minutes here. Because if it doesn't, maybe 10 minutes you will need just to start smoking. This is a little bit uh, depends on the heat that you have and you have to uh, be careful and you have to control this. She can just check the fish when it reaches the temperature. Yeah. And you can also check the fish uh, when it's done. If you're not sure, you use a food thermometer and you can, and you can just uh, Put the thermometer in, and if it's 45, 50 degrees, then uh, you should. It's good. It's good. Um, okay. Any more questions? This is now 12 o'clock. We can have a short break of. 10 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes. So let's have a break until 12, uh, 12, 10. Okay, and we'll continue, we'll show you the, uh, the salad called Shopska salad, or uh, shepherd salad or Avcharska. It's a very rich salad, very traditional salad, very tasty salad that we'll recommend you to take if you ever get here uh, to visit Bulgaria. Okay, thank you very much, see you in 10 minutes. Okay, my microphone is off. <coughs> Okay, so you have to try and see. You're not making a photo? Yes, please. Okay, okay make a photo. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll, well, you make because I'm not that good with this. Personally, I think we should have removed the... 
I moved what? Nothing, it's everything is perfect. Delicious. <laughs> Just shave you how I can stop this. You there should be a pause on it, should be a... the button here, you go the X. Okay. 